Hi everyone, it is the evening of Wednesday, August 13th, and Adobe has just launched the 2014.1 update for Adobe Muse, and one of the new features that they've added that I want to talk about right now is the ability to add your own self-hosted web fonts. And uh, to add a little perspective to that, if I get inside a text box here and I go to choose a font, you guys are probably familiar with the Add Web Fonts button, where you get a dialog box and you can browse through these Adobe Edge web fonts, which are all provided by Adobe, and they're really fantastic. It's amazing how many fonts they give us uh, for free that, that are essentially licensed for us to use without having to buy anything. Uh, so I'm going to cancel that. If you guys are not in the middle of working with the text box, you can also go to File and choose Add Remove Web Fonts to get to the same dialog box. And now with this update, when you do, there's this new tab at the top that says Self-Hosted Web Fonts, so you can add your own. The thing is, this doesn't go for any old font. It has to be a web font, and uh, that means having a special set of files. Not even just one file, but a set of files. If you guys have downloaded a web font, a font that's designed specifically to be a web font, you should have all of these files available to you. Uh, if you don't, then you may need to either get the web font version of the font that you've purchased or you may be able to convert it but uh, it really comes down to licensing so uh, you want to make sure that you have the license to use a font as a web font and that you have the web font files for it which will consist of a .woff file, a .eot file, and a .svg file and that helps to ensure cross-browser compatibility so to be honest I had a heck of a time finding a downloadable web font uh, that I could use as an example and I ended up actually making my own and you guys can download it from museresources.com if you guys are familiar with the icon mega pack on museresources.com I've gone ahead and I've turned it into a web font uh, so with that when you download it you'll get a little PDF reference file to show the 458 icons uh, and then you also get this font family folder now this goes for any web font but what you're gonna wanna do is start by finding the TTF version of the font and installing it on your operating system so I'm on a Mac and on my Mac I can just double click on this TTF file and choose install font if you're on a PC you may have to go through some other steps uh, if you download this uh, Icon Megapack web font, you'll get instructions on how to do that. Uh, but I'm just going to go the Mac way and hit install font and get it into my font book. Now, this installs it in the operating system, so I can now use this anywhere on my own computer. But that doesn't solve the web font issue of getting it published, getting it hosted through Muse. So that way, uh, people on the other end, people in internet, cyberspace, will see the same font that you see. Uh, because if you just install a font into your operating system and use it in Adobe Muse, uh, it'll become an image when you publish it. So the whole point of this is that the font doesn't become an image, that the font gets hosted and the font remains a font, uh, which means the text will be infinitely scalable, it'll be vector, it'll be completely high resolution on any device, could be a retina display, uh, could be someone who's got the resolution turned up or down for the sake of making things bigger or smaller. Doesn't matter. The quality stays perfectly crisp, just like text. So now that I've got it installed in my computer as the TTF file, uh, I'm going to go up one level back to this main folder that has this font family folder with all those font files inside. And I'm just going to drag that font family folder on top of this dialog box in Adobe Muse and it automatically identifies the WOFF, the EOT, and the SVG. So now I just have to click this little checkbox to confirm that I have rights to use this font and I'm going to hit continue and now you can see here it says that it came up with some issues so I'm going to choose fix issues and it says matching system font is missing. Uh, this is because I already had Adobe Muse open and when I had Muse open it didn't have the font installed yet. So when you open Muse, it actually scans your system for fonts, and uh, now it can't find that font. So I can go and I can try to resolve this, and I could type in Megapack, uh, and it comes right up here, Icon Megapack. So it's rescanning my font library. This happens if you installed the font and you already had Muse open. This doesn't happen if you installed the font before you opened Muse, just so you guys know. So it's not really a problem so much as, as it is uh, a timing thing. So now I've got all the font files matched up and I can hit OK. 
and now this font is officially installed. So the really cool thing about web fonts is uh, part of this new panel that they've added to Adobe Muse. So I'm just going to hit OK over here and let's say that I want to insert some icons over here. Let's say that I want uh, like a security icon to go with this uh, top of the line security text here. So I'm going to go and create a new text box because all these web fonts happen inside text boxes whether they're icons or not. And inside this text box, I can type to make sure that I can see what I'm typing. I've got some black text here, so I'm going to change the color to white. I've got some small text here, so I'm going to change the size to, uh, let's do 36. Uh, I could go even bigger than that. Let's do 60, just for, the, just for the sake of example here. And then my font is currently set to Arial, so that's not going to get me uh, my icons. I've got to switch to that Icon Megapack web font. So I'm going to choose that Icon Megapack web font. And if I start typing letters, I get letters. So where the icons come from is from this new panel. If you choose Window and find Glyphs. The Glyphs panel is this whole new panel, new in the Adobe Muse update that came out today. And if I make this bigger, you can see that all these icons are in here. And I can even make them bigger or smaller. And whatever icon I click on pops it right in there into my text box. So this Glyphs panel is my new browser to be able to browse these icons and to be able to browse special characters for whatever font I have selected. So now that I've got my security icon in there, I can recolor it or resize it or even position it differently in this text box however I see fit. And when I do that, when I'm done, I can reposition the box itself to reposition the icon. And when I preview it in the browser, it's going to be hard to tell because uh, this YouTube video is not the ultimate resolution. Uh, but now that I'm here, I can zoom in just to show you guys. And when I zoom in real big and scoot over, you can see that the icon has not lost any quality. It is vector. It is just like text. It does not lose quality as it scales. So this is really the ultimate way to be adding icons to your projects and it's being done in the way of a web font. So this web font feature is something that I'm really excited about uh, because we can now get vector shapes, vector icons to stay vector. Because as of right now Adobe Muse doesn't support SVG graphics or any other vector graphics in their native vector form aside from this, aside from these web fonts. So. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope this makes it a little bit easier for you guys to get web fonts installed. Um, if you'd like to get this Icon Megapack web font, go ahead and head over to museresources.com and you'll find the uh, new Icon Megapack web font. And you guys can download that, get that installed, and uh, it's going to make your lives a lot easier, especially even just with browsing and selecting icons and getting them to be the size and color that you want. It's really fantastic. All right, guys, got more cool stuff coming soon.